Thank you. Very nice to be here. Uh, I, I started out as a pianist, and um, I, I, I got my letters in piano, so I, I was quite advanced, and I did, piano, I did music at uh, Queensland University and studied with Max Olding. And I, I um, eventually went to Paris to study piano, and, but at the same time I had some lessons in London with a countertenor because I knew I could sing very high. And so eventually the countertenoring took over. And so I've made my career in the last 30 years probably as Australia's first countertenor that was out there doing concerts in public. But I thought I'd start today with a piece of my own, a little piano piece I've written called Feel in Phrygian, which means it's in a Phrygian mode, which is the mode on the white note starting on F. So I'll play you that first and then I'll sing you a song. Thank <laughs> So I'm going to leap right back now, that's my piece from the end of the 20th century, uh, to about 1600, so about 1608, really, literally. And this is a song from an opera, one of the very first operas, Monteverdi. Claudio Monteverdi was regarded as the father of opera, though there were a few operas before his one. Um, and, oh, I said 1608, that was his first opera, Orfeo, but there was one just before he died in about 1640 to 1642, and called The Coronation of Papaya. And Papaya becomes the wife, the empress of the, of em, the Emperor Nero in the opera. And she, she's a little vixen, really. She's uh, full of mischief, and lots of people have to be put to death so she can become the mistress. And Octavia is sent off to some some terrible exile on an island somewhere, that's the previous empress. So this is a lullaby sung to Papaya towards the end of the opera. <clears throat> She 
So now to go back further, this is, uh, being, being a musician working in, in early music, because I did a lot of early music, because I'm a countertenor, lots of people threw music at me saying, oh, can you sing this piece from the 13th century or the 14th century? And so because of that interest, I've, it's been very interesting historically for me to uh, investigate. I mean, I, I know a lot about the history of Europe, even though I've never studied history, be, because of my interest in music from Spain or from music from Portugal and so forth, right back to medieval times. So it's been a, I'm gradually putting it all together in my mind as to how it all works and how the 14th century works, which is about my favorite century actually of all. It's uh, quite wonderful and we've recorded a lot of 14th century music in Melbourne uh, on the Move label if anyone's interested. Uh, it's, it, it's Italian, and, ma and mainly Italian, actually, and it's fantastic. But I'm going to go back even further than that and sing you a song, not in my countertenor, but in my baritone, just to show you I can sing that too, um, about the death of King Richard the Lionheart. So we can actually put the song down to 1199, and it's, I'll, I'll just read you uh, a little translation for it. I'm only going to sing one verse of it because we're so short in time. Here's the, here's the first verse. It's called Forchos and it's by a, a, a composer called Gaussem Faidit. It is a most grievous thing that I must sing of the greatest loss and the greatest sorrow, alas, that I have ever known. I must lament forever in tears. For he who was the head and father of valor, the powerful and worthy Richard, King of England, is dead. Our God, what loss, what misfortune, what cruel word and terrible to hear. Hard indeed is the heart of him who can bear it. So, it's just the first verse, and in the middle you'll hear this little bit about Richard, Rey dels Engles es Mors. Richard, King of the English, is dead. And then, ah, Deus, ah, God, how can you bear it, sort of thing. So it's in a language called Languedoc, and it's the language of southern France around this period. 
It's a different language to French. In fact, it's much closer to Catalan, just over the border in Spain. So that's probably the closest one. It's a lovely language. Forchos ayats o tot lo major dan. That's how it sounds. That's the first verse. If you know a little bit about um, plain song or chant from Gregorian chant, you can hear that sort of element in it because it's that period, 1199, so it's very early, the earliest piece I'll do today. Um, so, but I've, I've made it... Uh, with this music, we've got the notes. We know what the notes are, but we don't know what the rhythms did. So there's a lot of conjecture. So I, I try to sing this one as close to singing G Gregorian chant as possible, but making the words do a lot of the decision-making about, about how the rhythms will work, if that makes sense. Uh, sorry. Forcho soi tot lo maggior dan. Et major dolas que eu anc mai savis, e so que eu de grae plegin ploran. Ma venadir in chantan a retraire, quel que era de valos caps e paire. Lorik valen richat re des ingles es mors. Ah, dies, calperd e caldanes, con estrange mot, con salvage ausir. Ben ador cor totsum. Kill pot so freer. Now I thought I would sing you just a small part of a song again, but this is from Spain, so we're going further forward again now, and it's about 1400 and something like that, I'd imagine. Because in Spain, when Isabel and Ferdinand, the, the, the monarchs of Spain in 1492, when they expelled the Arabs from the south of France, uh, south of Spain, sorry, um, the, all the Arabs were expelled. And it was called the reconquest of Spain. And uh, so the, the final battles happened and Granada in the south and all that area down there which was Arabic. Uh, in fact, most of Spain was Arabic for quite some centuries. Um, so all the Arabs were expelled and then all the Jews were expelled. So it really impoverished Spain in many ways because of that. And it's never been quite the same, I think. Um, but... You can hear the influence in this song. It's a Jewish song from Spain, which is called Sephardic. The Sephardic Jews were from Spain. Uh, and these, these songs have been recaptured in all sorts of places around the Mediterranean, places like Thessaloniki in, in Greece, and even further afield than that. I, I have a friend who was expelled. I mean, not her family were expelled. She's, she's alive today. But this is in 1500. And that, that migration went all the way from Spain to Siberia. That's where her family lived, in Siberia. It's amazing to think about it. So I'm going to sing you an, a little song. It's another lullaby called Nani Nani. And I'll just do a verse of it, and I'll do that and count to it again. <clears throat> Nani Nani Eat. 
tu padre viene con mucha alegría. Nani, nani, nani quiere El hijo de la madre, con la padre que viene con mucha alegría. Now, since I've uh, come back to live in, a, in Queensland uh, from Victoria in recent years, I've, I've had a lot more time, so I've been actually getting back into piano playing. So I'm going to leap up to about the 1820s now and play you the first movement of Beethoven's wonderful sonata, Opus 109. It's become my favorite sonata, and uh, the first movement is just such a joy. Uh, so I thought I'd do that. Okay, thank you.
Thank you.